before enabling JRubble into your projects or workspaces, I would encourage you to download the JRubble plugins. That can be done here within the plugins section within IntelliJ. All you need to do is hit plugins and then search for JRubble. Since I already have it installed, you can see it there, but all you would do is you would hit here, uh, click on that and you would hit install and it will prompt you to restart your IDE with the JRubble plugin attached. Now that we've installed the JRubble plugin into our IDE, in this case, we installed it into IntelliJ, we are now going to set up JRubble in a Hybris environment. First thing you wanna do is to open up the local.properties file inside of your platform home. Once we open up that file, what we're going to do is we're going to add a Tomcat Java options agent path argument. So what I'm doing here is I'm opening up the JRubble configuration window and scrolling to uh, standalone. Inside the standalone option, I am copying that agent path argument, and then I'm going to copy that and put that into my Tomcat Java options. Once I have added these uh, two agent path arguments, I'm then going to enable JRubble for every module within the Hybris project so that I can use IntelliJ to build my application. Now I am gonna walk through two separate ways that you can use JRubble. You can either use the IDE compiler to compile all your changes, or you can use an external build using your ant build, and I will show both ways of doing it. So for in this case, uh, what I'm first doing is I'm enabling JRubble for uh, each project now that I've successfully enabled JRebel for my entire Hybris workspace, I am now going to run an ant all inside of the platform home. What this is going to do is it's going to build the entire workspace with those Rebel XMLs, and it will also update the local.properties file that I modified with the agent path argument. Now that our ant build has been successful, we are now going to start the Hybris project with the JRubble agent attached to the service. So as soon as you start it up, if you have properly attached the Hybris agent path argument to your environment, you will see this JRubble bander being displayed that you saw uh, right there on the screen. Now that the application has started up, we are then going to open up the Hybris web page. We'll refresh that page just so we're at that home page of the application. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to select uh, one of the camera models and what we're going to do is we're actually going to update a properties file just to show that JRubble is working in our environment. And then we're going to modify the add cart to showing JRubble. Now that we've made this change, I'm then going to save and I'm going to then build this application. Because we enabled the project in IntelliJ, we are then going to save and compile the application so that we are updating the code and we'll be able to see it at runtime using JRub. This may take some time for your initial build, um, but after that, it should be much quicker. What we're able to see right away, we're able to see that that change has been reflected. The next way I wanna show you how you can use JRub if you're unable to use the IntelliJ build or you're unable to use Eclipse compiler what I'm then going to show is using uh, just a typical ant build. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify showing JRubble, but adding in with ant build to the end of it. So once I've made this change, I'm then going to save that file. Then I'm going to go into my terminal window and I'm going to open up that platform home. And then I'm going to run an ant build. I'm going to do this while the application is running. And what this is going to do is it's going to compile the workspace so that we are updating that code. And JRubble, what it's going to do is actually monitor that build directory and see that a change has been made. And it's going to immediately reflect that in the running application. So that is the second way that you could actually use JRubble. And once that's complete, we'll be able to see that change reflected. Now that the build has been completed, we're going to go back into the web page. And as you can see, once we refresh the page, we're able to see that now it says showing JRubble with ant build. 
So this is two separate ways that you could use JRebel inside of a Hybris environment and really see the benefits of your deployment process.